Howdy, partner. This is Shot Man from Option Titans coming at you again with another banger. And in this series, we're going to be going a little slow for the beginners who want to learn how to trade options. So video number one, what are options? We're going to be doing this on Webull. And if you don't have an account yet, you can click the link below and sign up to start trading. So first thing we're going to do once you sign in, we got home market trade. You're going to want to hit the trade button. Now, there are three things that you need to remember when understanding the basics of options trading. The stock you want to trade, the strike price, and the expiration date. For this example, we're not going to focus on my trading setup. We're going to go to stocks so we can pay attention individually and dive into what's going on. So as I said, you need to pay attention to those three things. But let me give you the textbook definition of what an options contract is. An options contract is an agreement between two parties for a future transaction on the underlying security, which can be a stock, at a set price, you remember the strike price I was talking about, within a specific date, that expiration. A contract gives a buyer or seller the right, but not the obligation to purchase that security at the price during the contract. We're gonna get into exercising options a little bit later, but I want you guys just to know the basics of what's going on so you can get in and start trading on your option contracts. Okay, so we're looking at the ticker Apple, which has been doing some crazy things. It's been doing some Apple things lately. And I got my strikes at 20. I'm gonna set it to 10 and we're gonna maximize this window. How I got there was this, if by default, you don't see what's going on on Webull, you hit the up for show, then you navigate to options, but we're gonna maximize this right now. And as you can see, the way I have it is, this was the trading day for today. So if you wanna minimize this, we're gonna go a little bit into the future after elections, December the 10th. So these options are showing calls and puts. But before we get into that, the amount of options contracts that you can buy each day depends on the type of account with your broker. So to buy and sell an option contract in the same day, it's called the day trade. If you buy a contract today and sell it, with, today is Friday, by the way, and sell it on Monday, that is not a day trade. A day trade is buying a contract. It doesn't matter. At any time in the market, you can buy it at 8 when the market opens up. You can buy it at 12 at noon on lunch, and you can buy it at 459. If you sell that contract before the trading day is over with, you have done a day trade. So a cash account, you don't have to worry about all of that because you only trade with the amount of cash that you have. Now, there are certain exceptions and you can get flagged, but not as much on a margin account. So the difference between that versus a margin account is if you don't have the proper margin in your account, which is $25,000 that I've seen standard in the United States, you will only be allowed to trade three day trades, period. Let me say that again. Three trades for a whole week. I just want to be clear on that. Back to calls and puts. A call is saying that you want the stock to go up. A put is saying that you want the stock to go down. I'm going to edit my settings here so we can focus in on the calls. So Apple currently is trading at $115.04. If you did a call option for Apple for December the 4th, 2020, at 116, your price would be $590. Let me explain why it's $590. The options contract that you are purchasing, one is the bid, this is the ask. The bid price is $590, so let's key that in. And we're gonna show you what happens with the magic options today. But first, let me explain the leverage on option contracts and why you want to purchase one. Because one option contract controls 100 shares of Apple. The power of holding 100 shares of Apple at $590 is so much leverage. It's so much sauce because Apple 
again, is going for $115. 115 times 100, that's how much you have to spend to control 100 shares of Apple. If you don't have that type of money, options will let you leverage that price and make you have a much more profit potential over a short amount of time. So strike prices in the option chain have three classifications, in the money, at the money, and out the money. In the money is when the current price is greater than the stock price. The current price of Apple is $15 and four cents. So I would say that's greater, but I would still kind of say that's at the money at this point. 14 meets that rule of in the money. At the money is when the price of the stock is the same as the option contract. That's why I would say the $15 would be at the money. Anything from here on forward, well on lower is in the money. This is at the money. Some would consider 116 to be at the money. But let me continue. Out the money is when the current price is below the strike price, or if you're doing a put, it's above. So 117 calls for Apple, they haven't happened yet because Apple is at 115, is out of the money. Let's get back to what we were talking about and the magic of the leverage. Remember that price that I told you guys about? That is called a premium. The premium is the price that you pay to obtain that contract, and they are made up of intrinsic and extrinsic value. Intrinsic value or time value. We're gonna break that down in another video. Your break-even price is the price that you pay for the premium plus the current strike price. So in order to be profitable, your contract has to exceed your break even price. And on Webull, it's right here for you so you can see where you break even at in green, which is great. And then it also says it here before you even do the contract. So this is the amount of contracts that you have. For example, if we do 10, that would be $5,900. Your max loss, guys, is the amount of money that you put up for the contract. So you will only lose $590 maximum. So I want to talk about limit, market, stop, stop limit, and time and force before I end this video and move on to the next thing. A limit order is saying that once you place a limit order for $590, you don't want to go beyond that. But if we're looking at this contract right here, guys, it's actually, to purchase that, it's $635. $590 was from the example that we had earlier. So one option contract at $635, that's the most you are willing to pay for that price. If you want to go ahead and hop in the contract, you need to purchase it at the ask for $655, and you'll be trading options <laughs> a market order you notice everything goes away you are saying that you want the broker to fill you at the best price it can computer algorithm the best price the computer algorithm can fill you at so you may get filled at 660 you may get filled at 625 this is a gamble but i usually don't do market orders a stop order is more for selling because once you buy in, you have to sell out. A stop order is more for selling your option contracts. If you're buying calls or puts, you have to sell to get out of that option contract before or on expiration so your option doesn't expire worthless. A stop limit is saying that the same thing as a stop. If I didn't describe a stop, I'm gonna do a stop limit because it's gonna handle both of them at the same time. The stop price is saying that once Apple falls below, my contract falls below 605, my limit price is gonna be $6, which is basically $600 in this case because you have to multiply everything by 100. So again, 
to sell a contract that you have before or on expiration, that's the following setup. You buy in at the limit. Please don't buy in at the market. And then when you sell, you type in the amount of contracts that you purchase. You don't want to have lingering contracts if you want to get out the trade immediately. You do a stop limit or you can do a, a limit order to sell out. It, it works either way, but most of the time when I'm selling, the sauce is I'm already entering my stop loss. We're going to cover that later. We're going to do a stop limit. We're going to sell and wait until our contract price is hit. Because once that price is hit, uh, we're good. We're getting into too much. Again, you buy in, you sell out. You buy in, you sell out. See you guys in the next video.